everybody, Rachel here, Treehouse Knits. How are you? Happy New Year, happy 2019. I have not talked to you guys since last year. I hope you had a great holiday season. If you're like me, you are happy that we are back into our routines. And while I love the holidays, I love routine even better. So, well, I have a lot to share with you. So why don't we just go ahead and jump in and get started. You know the drill. You can find me on all the socials as Treehouse Knits. I wanna welcome a bunch of new subscribers that came over here to the channel. Welcome. I hope you find what you're looking for here. If you're not, if you don't, I understand there's other podcasts out there. So, and there's some great ones out there. I'm still surprised that y'all are watching me still. But it, the first item on our agenda is to do our final draw for the year of the Mitten Cal 2018. We had, let's see, this draw was in my on my podcast page in the thread from numbers two, let's see, it was like 250 something to 306. I should have written it down, but I didn't. But I ended up pulling the number, drawing on random number generator number 268, who is no scrubs 58, Carrie Malley. And she could not have been the most perfect person to win the final draw because she has been a contributor since the get-go. So thank you, Carrie. She won with her happy glamper mittens, which if you have not seen them, I will put a picture here. Aren't those cool? She knit up a bunch of those. She has a whole bunch of other mittens that she's been knitting, and I think she just came out with a new pattern. She's she's Carrie Malley, I believe, on Instagram. I know we follow each other there. So if you want to learn more about her patterns, check her out there, or check her out definitely on Ravelry. Her patterns are there. Um, no Scrubs 58, again, is her handle on Ravelry. Instead of sending you out some color work uh, yarn that you can use for more mittens, I thought we'd change it up a little bit. Your prize is going to be this kit to make this Drummond Island hat. So we're still doing color work. It's just, I thought, maybe you wanted to break up the um, fun monotony of doing color, uh, color work mittens. This is a kit that was created special by um, a few ladies from the state of Michigan. Here's the colorway. I actually knit up the hat a year or so ago. Here's mine. It's a super fun knit, uh, and I always get compliments on it when I wear it out. This yarn is very special because it, the sheep that it uh, came from is from the great state of Michigan, as is the dyer who dyed it and the mill who spun it up. So, and the designer of the pattern is also Michigan based. So Carrie, I hope you enjoy that. Get back to me with your mailing address and I will ship that out. And thank you to all of you who participated in that fun color work mitten cal, year of the mitten 2018. Uh, tons of great mittens. If you want any inspiration, do check out that thread on my Revelry podcast page. Now, you know we need to start a new Cal, and I was wondering what kind of Cal should we do for the new year when I got a message from Paige the Framer who asked if I wanted to be part of a um, knit-along or a make-along that a bunch of other podcasters were doing, and of course I said yes. So we will be doing the New to You make-along, and I'll put the information here. All you need to do is use that hashtag on Instagram. I have not decided if I'm going to make an actual thread in the, on the um, Treehouse Knits podcast page, but the ladies from Arrow Acres Farm, they will have a podcast page Ravelry thread that you can enter on as well. But I believe that I will be pulling from the hashtag on Instagram. And then each one of the podcasters, I think there's 13 or 14 that are involved in it, will be um, contributing a prize for the grand prize, which I believe will be drawn from the Arrow Acres, um, Arrow Acres thread. So I will have all the details, specifics in my show notes for this episode, but what, pray tell, will I be doing as my new to me make along? Where did it go? Okay, so I decided, I know I've mentioned this to you before, that I really wanted to use my knitting machine 
learn how to knit the sleeves and the body of a colorwork sweater and then pick up with my knitting needles and knit the colorwork in the yoke. So hand knit that. So I did just that uh, since the last time I saw you. I'm not sure if I had this or not. Uh, but here's where I'm at. I decided that I wanted to do, let me grab the pattern first of all. So new to me, because I have never used a hand knit pattern and translated that onto my knitting machine. And it really couldn't have been easier because the pattern, the knitting pattern gives you the numbers and all you need to do is pull those numbers, pull the needles up on your um, knitting machine. I mean, there's more to it. So that's, there was a huge learning curve to do it and just to get my machine to work. But the pattern I decided to use, <clears throat> I thought who better to do a new to me make along sweater than, than the lovely ladies at Tin Can Knits because they are known for their basic sweaters that are basic, any kind of item, knitted item. They've got great tutorials on their website and they're just, their patterns are very clear. So I decided from the Strange Brew uh, book that I picked up, the ebook, I was going to do this sweater. It's called the Ice Fall Sweater and it's basically knit from the bottom up which is perfect for me on my knitting machine and the way that I was planning on making the sweater and instead of doing any color work on the sleeves and the um, base or the band of the sweater the body of the sweater I decided to just do that solid so I'm really only doing this up um, by hand so here's where I am I Use the numbers and oh, look at my fat squirrel bag from Needles Up. I love this bag. It's huge. It's solid. It's, oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So from the fat squirrel. But here is my project. Let's see if I can nicely show it to you without ripping it apart. So here's where we are. I picked up this yarn on sale at... Uh, on Craftsy over the holidays, maybe right before the holidays, they had a really, really good sale on certain yarns. And this um, yarn, it's a chalkboard color yarn, and it comes from Art Yarns. It's Merino Cloud, and yeah, I think it was called like doesn't have it on here, but it was called Chalkboard, I believe. And it's a Merino Cashmere yarn. And I think I got enough yarn in online to, um, I think it was maybe like $40 I spent on this Merino Cashmere. So here are the sleeves. I knit them up similar to how I do a sock on the knitting machine. So you do the ribbing back and forth, and then you connect and join in the round. And I did all the decreases on my machine. So let me see if I can pull up where my decreases are. So you can see they are all right there. You can see the line of decreases and that ended up being on the inside of my arm. And then I knit the body and you'll see the base, that pink down there is actually waist yarn that I'll pull off. And then I think I'm going to make ribbing on my machine and then somehow connect it to the bottom. But there's the body, here's the other sleeve. So I made two, two identical sleeves. I made a body and then I connected exactly the way they said in the pattern, I followed it to a T. So eventually I will have to Kitchener the underarm together. And then I have just been following along this beautiful pattern. I love the colors that I chose for this. Let me see if I can get it up closer for you. The, the colors have a real tonal quality to them and they're all yarns that I got in my Sleeping Bear Dunes Club over the last year. Actually, two of them are, one is not. The first one that is not is a yarn that I picked up, I believe, at um, YarnCon in Chicago. And I absolutely loved this color when I saw it. It's um, called Angel Baby. It is from Brew City Yarns. And it's an 8010 merino wool cashmere. And then there's a little bit of line, uh, nylon in there too, 10%. But I love the tonal quality, kind of a peachy pink 
of that. And I've never had a project that was good enough for this yarn and I love it because I combined it with, let me show you the three colors together. And I think with this gray, it's gonna be so pretty. So there are the three colors. This one is turning out a little bluer than it is. It's more of a green blue. So I told you about the Bruce City yarns. The second colorway I got from my pack from Wool and Honey, my Wool and Honey Club, is from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. I've never had anything from her. I got it from the Yarn Club. And I wish that the tonal quality would show a little bit better for you, but this is a gorgeous, gorgeous color too. And it's an 80-10-10 merino cashmere nylon. So pretty similar in um, yarn base. And then the third one that I got is from Wool and Honey. And this was their Empire Beach Glass colorway. And it's from 100 Ravens. So those are the three colors I'm using. It's going really, really well. I am starting to worry that I'm going to run out of this black yarn. So not sure what I'll do. Hopefully they still have some of this on Craftsy. If they don't, I will just have to get creative and figure out what to do. It's gonna be close. So that's my first project I wanted to share with you. That's my new to me make along and I hope that you consider joining in. It's a make along so you can, sorry for that little shake there. So you can do any type of creative activity that's new to you, um, anything. Another one of my whips is the Boundary Bay Shawl. I talked about it on my last podcast. It is the knit along for the Grand Rapids Knitting Guild that I belong to. And I've gotten pretty far on the first section. There's four sections. I'll put a picture of it in here. The Boundary Bay is by a local designer. Her name is Ruth Bulkins. She goes by the um, name Spout Knits on Instagram and on Ravelry, and she does some beautiful patterns, and she does a lot of pattern support for Neighborhood Fiber Company, of which this particular pattern, her design was made with it. <clears throat> I am using, I showed you the last time, in this first section, I'm using this really pretty Malabrigo. Actually, it's Manos, Manos not Malabrigo. But you can see I'm, what I'm doing is in sections, I am, uh, I've got a little mohair in there and there's this really big um, cable that goes down the side. And that's how it's turning out so far. I'll keep showing you progress as I do it. Right now it's really potato chippy kind of knitting, which has been nice the last couple of days in between the color work stuff that I've been working on. Another project that I worked on over Christmas, let's see, where did I put it? Oh, I decided, I don't know where I got the idea, it was somebody on Instagram who was doing it last year and I thought it looked so sweet on their couch. And that is a Christmas granny stripe blanket. So I went ahead and made some magic cake balls out of some red and green yarns that I had. And this is the progress I made this Christmas. I'll just pull it out probably every November or December and just start with the minis that I have and the, the scrap yarn I have in red and greens. So far, I think it's turning out really well. I think I went a little too big on it. This thing is gonna fit like, I think a queen size bed, but you know, we can wrap on the couch under it, two of us or three of us or four of us. But that is my Christmas granny stripe blanket. I'm putting it in this beautiful project bag that my mother-in-law made for me for Christmas. It's a sparkly, um, birch tree pattern and on the inside, it's a sparkly dark color. I just love it. Okay, another thing over Christmas that I did, I think I shared with you that I was planning on doing this. Maybe it was just on Instagram I shared with you. Because I have this knitting machine and I figured out how to make the sock tubes with ribbing on it, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to see how many sock um, skeins I could get to the point where they have toes and cuffs and not put the heel in yet, but then put them all in a basket and bring that basket out on Christmas 
when we have my family over and everybody can pick a sock and then I will take their foot measurements and knit in the heels during Christmas um, that fit their feet perfectly. So that's what I did. I actually had two baskets. This is what I have left. These were the unselected socks, um, but it basically looked like this. Uh, they got to see the sock and pick the pattern and then I got their size and knit them up. But oh my gosh, it was so fun. It was fun to see what everybody would pick. I'll just show you some of the socks that I'd um, knit out. This is an old pattern, our uh, old sock yarn, Sakata, got from my mother-in-law. This is a colorway from Audine Wools. That's part of Knit Crate. Look at how pretty that, that sock came out. This is, uh, I love it. I cannot believe no one picked this. I think I'm just gonna make it for myself, a Regia. I love that pattern. This is, uh, this was a gift from my mother-in-law. It's a German sock yarn. I was worried it was gonna pool, but I just love how it came out on the sock machine. This is Dragonfly Fibers, the um, Van Gogh Sunflowers. This is how it turned out. Kind of fun for you to see. And I love how the, because it's knit back and forth for the ribbing on the machine, you get a different look than on the actual sock. And boy, I have a sock that I wanna show you that came off the machine that I'm working on right now for someone. Check this out. This was a knit crate from last June, a sock crate. Um, check this out. So I love, I think that's really cool, that spiral, but look at how that ribbing came out. It's such a cool, almost looks argyle design that is like mathematics knitting mathematics wizardry there I don't, you could never figure it out the other sock did this so depending on where i started i guess at least the legs look the same but there's a little surprise difference in the top of the cuff which i think is really cool anyways that was a fun little surprise this is how sock uh, kickapoo sock came out and this was country fair from Ut I bought this at Utopia Fiber Shop you know, outside of Madison, Wisconsin. This is Kate Wright Designs. Again, I was worried that might um, pool a little funny, but I love how it turned out. So that ended up being a really fun surprise that I got to do for my family and now some of my friends as well. And, uh, you know, all because I got that sock machine. Love, love, or knitting machine, I should say. I continue to love that thing and really find it a great compliment to my hand knitting. Okay, so that is my socks. One final thing I wanted to share with you is the Jules Vatten 2018. This was a mystery knit along that I did uh, that was uh, put on by the, the Mitten Guild in Norway. And I knew that the pattern was designed by Venke Rold. She's the one who designed the white churches um, colorwork mitten that I did and has beautiful designs. I love, love, love her designs. So when I heard she was the designer for this mystery knit along, I thought I would love to do it. So it, the pattern um, updates came, I think we had five different sections, four there was the color work, um, the cuff, then there were, was two, I think, for the, two or three for the color work on the mitten, and then the final one was the thumb. And here, I'll do it in the order that I knit them. So there was the cuff, and then you could leave a little bit of a tail, and then came the squirrels eating their nuts, and then came these really pretty birds on the branch of the tree, and then these little birds at the top of the tree. The back was this really simple pattern and then it finished with another little bird. You can see the little birdie there. Super fun pattern. Yes, I did both of them at the same time, which was really a nice, I, I really like doing them tandemly, so I think I may do that in the future when I knit my mittens. I used, uh, Rauma, the three, um, can't think of the, the word here, but it's the more of the sport DK weight, the heavier weight. 
it gives me a bigger mitten and I need that for my hand size. So I'll just put them on for you. I love the long cuff that will go inside the coat, but um, really fun pattern and really fun um, mystery knit along. So I'll look for that again next year. That was super cool. So while we are along the lines of knitting color work mittens, <clears throat> I have had a few of you ask me how I line my mittens. And I haven't lined all of my mittens, but I have lined a couple of them. I actually learned how to line mittens from the Sweet Nectar Mitts pattern. If you'll recall, this is the pattern. It's by um, oh, Tannis Fiber Arts. I can't think of her name, but you can see it on my project page. And everything that I talk about today is on my project page, page on uh, Ravelry. But I ended up knitting this cashmere, um, well, mauvey tone liner. And while it looks like it might be intimidating and you think, oh, I gotta knit a whole nother mitten, it really goes faster because in this case, I had a DK weight yarn. This was Legacy Fiber Arts in one of their sock kits, actually. Um, the yarn that I used for the liner is actually a, a much lighter weight fingering yarn. So here is what it looks like with the liner pulled out. So you'll notice that the liner really just is another mitten. And the way that I knit it is I just, with the um, center or the inside away from you, I picked up stitches along the ridge on the inside of the mitten. And so for example, well this isn't a good example, but you just pick a spot on the inside of the mitten and follow that line all the way around, picking up stitches. And you really don't need to pick up a stitch per stitch if you don't want to. You you know, you can, in this case, I think I did pick up one stitch for each, just because I was using a finer weight yarn. And then you just follow the pattern. Now, this is a different gauge than here, so following the numbers of a pattern, meaning the actual like rows or rounds that they call for didn't work, but what worked is just measuring. So I, I took a look here and I said, well, from here to here, is so many inches so I know that I need to knit that many inches and then I put the thumb in the number of inches appropriate for that as well and just knit up you know according to pattern so what you have is the right sides are both facing out so that when you push it into the mitten you've got wrong sides against each other and it's really as easy as that <laughs> to knit the liner now I think what I want to do going forward is I think that I could actually hang this from my knitting machine and then knit back and forth a tube and then I can push it through. So that is something I would like to try next on the machine. I've actually tried it and I made a little goof but it was working so I ripped it out and I just haven't gone and tried it again. That's the thing with the knitting machine. You just have to jump in and be fearless and just try things. You can't worry about things not working. And actually, when I make the mistake is when I learn the most. So it's oh, it's been such a fun journey on that knitting machine. But anyway, I hope that helped you with knitting the liners. If you want more in-depth um, detail on how to knit the liners, go to that Sweet Nectar Mitts pattern on Ravelry and um, she explains how to do it really simply, kind of like I just explained. It's not total hand-holding, but it did, did help me just figure it out. I just realized I haven't mentioned to you what's on Elsie back there and what I'm wearing. Back there is a, um, I don't know, what would you call it, a vest or a shawl with side arm holds. Veronica, it was uh, really popular maybe last year or the year before by um, Shannon Cook. And I actually knit that in a sheep. It's completely the, the uh, fleece from one sheep. Her name is Ella and she is a CVM bond cross from Never Say Never Farm. That is her natural color. And many episodes ago, I actually showed you a picture of Ella and my trip to the Never Say Never Farm. Um, long time ago. If you want to see that farm visit, go check that out. Okay, so 
acquisitions. I ended up picking up on Craftsy sale a couple of other yarns uh, in sweaters quantity that I can do some more sweaters on my sock machine or my knitting machine. It's not a sock machine. I keep calling it that. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of money so these on um, yarn, but I want good yarn uh, to work on my machine with. So I thought I would pick up a few yarns. Now they came as a kit for the Architecture Scarf Knitting Kit. They were buy one, get one free on, on uh, Craftsy. That's the, well, that's a bad way to look at it. Let me open it up. So I had to buy two, you know, buy one, get one free. So basically this sweater was, the quantity that I got, the sweater's quantity was again, under $40, I wanna say. But that is a gorgeous, gorgeous scarf as well. So I will save for sure the pattern. <clears throat> Can you tell I've been fighting a cold for the last week? <laughs> okay, so this is the first yarn. It's Cloudborn. I've heard about Cloudborn a million times from the Grocery Girls when they were working with Cloudborn on Craftsy. And I loved this color. I thought it was so rich and so pretty. So I'm thrilled with how it feels so far. It's a really thin yarn, which will be perfect for the machine. And like I said, I got two, uh, two quantities worth of those. So I have four skeins. These are hefty skeins, it should be plenty. They're almost 500 yards a skein. So I got that color and I thought, you know, buy one, get one free. I should maybe get another color as well. So I got this blue color as well. So I will mix and match with, you know, I'll find some other color work patterns and I will practice, or maybe I won't even do a color work. Maybe I will try a full sweater, maybe a cardigan on my machine. Who knows? Excuse me while I go down here. The other yarn I picked up <clears throat> when I worked in the knitting shop, I we carried Mrs. Crosby Loves to Play and we carried the satchel and I always loved that particular yarn base and they had it on a deep discount in this huckleberry color. So I picked that up as well. Now on the knitting machine, I do not yet know how to alternate skeins as I'm knitting. So I thought that would be a good, this yarn would be a good lesson in trying to do that because it's a definitely a hand dyed uh, yarn. So I got enough yarn here to, knit some sort of garment as well. So really excited about that. So that is my making. That is what I've been up to over the last few weeks since I last recorded. I would love to get back into a little bit more spinning. My wheel is staring at me right now and I've got some really neat new fibers from family for Christmas. I would also love to get back into my cross stitch because I think that I have a winter cross stitch I'd love to work on. So many different hobbies, and I know so many of you do so many other things other than knitting, so I hope you appreciate. I hope I don't bore you with my other activities. You're probably here just wishing I would talk about knitting, but um, until we see each other again, I hope you have a wonderful two weeks of creativity, creative joy, and we'll see you on the next episode.